26, 2018 at 7.03 p.m. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no presentations of awards or proclamation, uh, so we'll move to public participation on any matter related to board responsibilities. And our phone line is open at 860-665-8736. Seeing no public uh, in the audience and no one calling in, uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is our consent agenda. And uh, Dr. Braverman, once you take a seat, I'll ask you to move to approve that. Uh, move to approve. Okay, I'll make oh. Thank you. Oh, lots of minutes. Thank you. Uh, move to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of May 23rd, 2018, special meeting June 6, 2018, special meeting June 11th, 2018, June 25th, 2018, June 28th, 2018, and August 23rd, 2018, and an informational meeting September 12th, 2018. And a second? Seconded by Mrs. Guyon. Does anyone have any uh, comments or changes? to the agendas as presented. Seeing none, the consent agenda is approved. Uh, we have no old business. We'll move on to uh, new business, uh, starting with an action item regarding our 2019-2020 guidelines. Um, for the budget, if someone can read that motion for me, Mrs. Guyon. Move the Board of Education approve the budget guidelines for the 2019-2020 school year as reviewed on September 12th, 2018. And a second by Mr. Vasella. Uh, this is something that we talked about at some length at our meeting a couple weeks ago. Does anyone have any other questions or comments on it before we vote? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. If I can have Mr. Branda read the request for the conference date changes. Move the Newington Board of Education change the dates of the high school parent teacher conferences from March 20 and 21, 2019 to March 27th and 28th of 2019. And a second by Mrs. Guyon. Uh, we also discussed this two weeks ago at our meeting regarding the SAT date and the high school wanting to line up their conferences around that. Um, no one really had any objections. In our last meeting, does anyone have any further questions or comments on it before we vote? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tufelt, if you'd like to read the next action regarding the resolution honoring cafeteria workers. Move the Board of Education approve the resolution honoring school cafeteria workers, proclaiming Wednesday, October 10th, 2018, as a school cafeteria workers day. And a second by Mrs. Stam. Uh, this is something we do every year to recognize uh, different parts of our organization. We have another one as our next action item. Um, obviously, we know how important our cafeteria service is, and they'll be present uh, at our next meeting on October 10th to present them with that award and for us to talk with them about um, the great work that they're doing. Any other comment or questions before voting? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, Mrs. Stam, if you'd read the fourth action item, uh, the resolution honoring school bus drivers. Move the Board of Education approve the resolution honoring school bus drivers and proclaiming Wednesday, October 10th, 2018, as School Bus Drivers Day. And a second by Dr. Braverman. Uh, again, another part of our organization that we will see on October 10th uh, to recognize their efforts. 
Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the next is action item five, a meeting cancellation, uh, October 24th. Mr. Vasella, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Move the Board of Education cancel the regular meeting scheduled for Wednesday, October 24th, 2018. And a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Tufel. Uh, this is our traditional time when we uh, recognize our Teacher of the Year this year, Mrs. Jen Fries, uh, who we're so excited uh, to be our Teacher of the Year. Um, and as we saw when we did our consent agenda, we are not shy about scheduling special meetings if and when we need to. So if there obviously, if there is any business between our October 10th meeting and our first meeting in November, then we would of course be able to schedule a, a meeting uh, based on our availability. Any questions or comment before we vote on that? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, we'll move on to action six, uh, child nutrition programs, a signature change. If I can have, uh, Dr. Braverman, do you have that out? Can you, do you mind reading that motion? Microphone. Thank you. Uh, authorize signature change form, move the Board of Education, designate and authorize Mrs. Pamela Maraca, interim superintendent of schools, to sign the ED-099 agreement for child nutrition programs and to sign claims for reimbursement. In absence or incapacity of Mrs. Pamela Maraca, the second person designated and authorized to sign claims for reimbursement shall be Mr. Stephen Farisi, assistant superintendent of schools. And a second by Mr. Branda. Um, just from reviewing this, and please let me know, Mr. Farisi, Ms. Rock, if there's anything else, it just appears that this is something we, we have to do when we have someone else who will be the signatory. It's as simple as that. Uh, any other questions or comment from the board? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And we'll move on to action item seven uh, regarding the child nutrition program permanent agreement. Uh, Mrs. Guyon, we are back to you. ED-099, Agreement for Child Nutrition Programs. Move the Board of Education, authorize Mrs. Pamela Maraca, Interim Superintendent of Schools, to sign the ED-099 Agreement for Child Nutrition Programs and to sign claims for reimbursement. In the absence or incapacity of Mrs. Pamela Maraca, the second person designated and authorized to sign claims for reimbursement shall be Mr. Stephen Farisi, Assistant Superintendent of Schools. And a second by Mr. Branda. Um, I will turn this over to Mrs. Maraca to explain what the new changes that were signing. The new changes are in requirements for our breakfast program that we have as well as our lunch program and it just requires us that we're going to continue to meet those adjusted changes. Um, it really is a formality so that we can participate in the lunch and breakfast program. Does it change anything that we're currently doing? In no. terms, We're already meeting everything they just we're have? Correct. We're already okay. meeting it. They've just, it's a little bit of a language change, but it doesn't change the practice or the way we get reimbursement at all. And so this doesn't affect the standards that we have to meet for our, what meals we're actually serving and things like that? Like we usually get a yearly update on that. No, it does not make any of those changes. Okay. Any other questions from the board regarding uh, this? It seems more like housekeeping than anything else. It is. Okay. Seeing no other discussion from the board, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Um, we will now move on to item eight, which is a discussion regarding middle school social workers. And but for um, Mrs. Maraca sending me a text message the other night about this issue, we would have been done with our new business. Um, so I blame Mrs. Maraca. But um, one thing that we've discussed around this table quite a bit is the, um, the real need that we have for social workers in both of our middle schools. And it was a incredibly passionate subject and topic of dis discussion throughout our whole budget. Um, one thing, and I'm not, not sure when we talked about it, but was that with the change in, um, at the top of our administration with Mrs. Maraca stepping in as interim superintendent, um, right now we're operating the district without uh, a deputy superintendent. And um, it is, it would, it would likely be hard no matter what to go back to a situation where we add back in a deputy superintendent uh, when Mrs. Maraca does retire. Um, 
So there is an opportunity that um, with the savings uh, in salary um, from not having that position, taking into account the money that uh, was paid out to Dr. Collins um, for his resignation, um, the money that's being paid to Mrs. Morocco for her new position, um, and uh, potential funds for a search firm for our uh, permanent superintendent search. Um, there are, I'm told there is the availability um, that we could hire a social worker for each middle school starting in around November, December. Um, and that would essentially be a zero, uh, zero impact on our current budget. And uh, assuming we didn't hire another administrator next year, it would be a zero impact moving forward as well from what we currently have as a budget. Um, so I wanted to, we wanted to bring that to the board's attention immediately for a response on good idea versus bad idea, um, pro con. Um, and before we go over there, I, I <laughs> would ask Mrs. Maraca to add anything else to that, um, or Mr. Giacomo, it's about the finances or anything like that. Mr. Giacomos and I have got, reviewed the finances and determined that it is um, very reasonable to hire those two positions, either, you know, no. November most likely by the time we post it and if they're already employed they'd need to give their employee employer a reasonable amount of time before leaving um, and then looking at the likelihood or as um, Mr. Shulman said this evening not the replacement of a deputy su deputy superintendent position you would then have those dollars in your budget again for 2019 2020 and could continue to keep that moving forward. And so in, in terms of what happens next year, I know we've had some private conversations about what workload has looked like in central office right now, because obviously that means there are some duties that were the deputy superintendents that are now being folded into the superintendent's role or interim superintendent's role, and then other duties that have been distributed throughout other administrators. Correct. The administrative team is um, a marvelous team to work with. They have taken on other responsibilities, and what we're doing this year with the transition is the example I'll use is I'm responsible for Smarter Balanced. I, I was CMT capped, so now I'm Smarter Balanced, um, but we do have our director of school counseling and student assessment, so Seth Korn and I will work together this year and, and on what it means to administer the Smarter Balance, and he will take that on. He already coordinates PSAT, SAT school day, and all of the other high school assessments, so it was a logical transition. Um, Mrs. Krause is a phenomenal partner. Um, she and I are going to work together on the consolidated and title grants. So some of those things are really going to transition and we're shifting how we're working. Um, and so I, I'm confident that without the role, this team will keep it together. And so, and I, I, I don't want to downplay the impact that any of these decisions are having on our other administrators and a, a future superintendent who's going to come in with, with more responsibilities than um, might have had um, a year ago or two years ago. Um, so I don't want to downplay that at all as, as part of this discussion. Um, I do think a lot of us have been thinking internally about this type of thing as, as an option to get social workers, which is one of our highest priorities. So I'll, I'll open up to discussion, Mrs. Guyon. I would like to say thank you to the administrative team just for everybody taking on those extra responsibilities because I, for one, could not be more excited to um, at the prospect of having social workers in the middle school. Um, just goes to show, or it's another demonstration of how uh, the, our staff really does work together as a team and, and is willing to put in the extra work when it um, benefits kids. So I really, really, really appreciate it. And I'm super, super, super excited. Mr. Rissell? I, I was just about to say the same thing, to thank the, the, the team, the administrative team that we have going right now with all of the activities that are going on between negotiations with uh, bargaining units, with uh, the combining of jobs and resources and everything going on, and yet our school system still is shining as bright as it ever has. And I, I do want to extend my gratitude to, to the whole administrative team. And I can't be happier as a middle school teacher to see social workers in the middle school. It's uh, phenomenal. And uh, I thank everybody that that worked. Mrs. Stam. I should just say ditto. Um, I'm, you know, I'm thrilled. It's been on my 
docket since I started. I'm just so excited about that. I'm just so glad that the kids are going to get the, what they're going to get. And I know this office works extremely hard to make everything work and, and collaborate. And I'm so glad that you're thinking out of the box and you're coming together to make it work. And again, for the kids, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Mr. Brando. I will say ditto just on all of that. I think we had that discussion after Parkland, and I think it was pretty clear that everybody around this table was very passionate about the need for those social workers. So just thank you to everybody. Um, I do have two questions really quick. I know at curriculum we talked about school psychologists as well, needing them. Um, I assume that this means we still do need more help in the middle school. Um, and then I was just wondering, how long has it been since we've had social workers in the middle school? I've been here 19 years, and they were not here when I started. I don't, maybe Mrs. Yeah, never have. I think they have the 80s. And just for the public, Ms. Mr. Giacomowitz is refusing his microphone, but he said we maybe had them in the 80s. Check the archives. I think the other part of the question was in terms of additional need because we had had some discussion about psychologists um, with all the, the testing that's going on. I can speak to it from the perspective of our Director of Student Services, Services Mrs. Guglioso, and then this evening um, I did notify staff um, such as Marilena and our program leader for school psychologists, social workers. And this evening Mrs. Magnano sent me an email back and she said, I can't wait, I'll, our team will welcome them and embrace them. So I think that again, not having those individuals at the middle school, we still don't know yet um, how it will support and what those needs will be because some of that counseling that our school psychologists are doing may be able to happen again with our social workers as well as then looking at the role of the three school counselors at the middle level. So now we're going to have a full team versus sort of pieces of a team. You're Mr. Frisi. Sure. Uh, Mr. Tofeld asked about the timeline again, and I just wanted to kind of put it out there for clarification. Obviously, depending on when the Board of Ed would approve us moving forward with this, um, I'm just going to kind of put a timeline out there for being realistic. Um, if we were to post around October 1, uh, we usually post for a couple of weeks to get a, a solid candidacy pool. Um, and then by the time we interview and go through the process, we may be completed with that around uh, October 31st. Uh, and then they would, if they were, like Mrs. Maraca shared, from another district, it would be about a 30-day notice. So um, around December would be an appropriate timeline. Um, and I would also share, I think, um, in order to do what's in the best interest of our students, schools, and community, um, if at this time of the year we didn't feel like the candidacy pool yielded the appropriate um, option for uh, social workers to put in place, uh, we would then defer and wait till the springtime if we didn't gain the candidacy pool that we had hoped during this time of school year. But, um, but we hope we do, and we would love to move that forward as soon as possible. And, and that's a, a really appropriate point that it's, there's, you know, it's not get the first people in, it's we need people that are going to work um, for our system and, and obviously bring someone in the middle of a year if we're able to find candidates that are great there's, there's going to be some type of transition period before it's really up and running um, you know how, how it should be so but an incredibly exciting opportunity um, Mr. Vassell Does this require if going back to Mr. Frasey's statement does this require board action? I, I believe the plans uh, council already approved um, the, the positions okay. um, so that it's it's just a, a transfer of money into the position. So the, this, this, and that's why it's on as a discussion item rather than an action because there's no formal action we need to take. It's in the superintendent's discretion to move funds where they see fit. Um, and the positions were already created, although not funded. I just wanted to make sure that if we could move it ahead tonight by suspending the rules and moving it, I would be so inclined to <laughs> offer a motion to suspend the rules and it's, continue it. Exactly. So, and, and the, the way that I was anticipating proceeding was that barring a strenuous, um, and logical, and rational objection from, from anyone, um, that, that would be the sign from the board that we support the superintendent um, moving the funds um, from uh, administrative salary into um, social worker. Any further comments, Mrs. Guyon? I just wish I had like a confetti cannon to <laughs> <laughs> celebrate appropriately. I know I am. I 
wasn't sure we would be able to do um, something like this, but I, I do give a lot of credit to our administrative team. I, I thought there would be um, more hiccups, and I'm sure that there's some, you know, obviously everything is a little different right now and will continue to be different, um, but this is an incredible thing that we're going to be able to do for our students, so I am, I can't believe it's actually happening. Every single year I've been on the board, we've said no at the, at the last second, so. Great, all right, any other discussion before we move on? Dr. Braverman. Are there a lot of social workers out there, period, for school systems? There are multiple social workers out there, many of them employed with other agencies, um, agencies sometimes that we contract with. Um, the only example I can use is that when we put in effective school solutions, they very easily acquired two social workers um, for our program, and you will soon meet those individuals as well. So yes, there are, to answer your question. And do they need special training to be in a school system? Well, yes, you would be a school social worker, and you're certified. It's part of your coursework and certification. Good. Thank you. Well, it looks like we will have um, a posting out there soon then, and that's, um, <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Um, and someone's going to have to call Danielle and tell her um, about it. <laughs> um, we are moving on to the superintendent of schools report, uh, Mrs. Maraca. I would just like to reiterate that schools opened on a high note and they continue to stay working very hard and uh, students enjoying the work that they're doing and all that they're learning. Our teachers continue to um, engage students in great activities for learning. Um, and so it's been a pleasant opening. Um, in our enrollment, we still do not have our magnet schools. That number will come in October 1st, once Crack knows who's sitting in their classrooms. So the projection and the actual enrollment for September are a difference of five students, and that's probably one of the closest that we've ever had over the years. Um, and you know, I'm assuming it will uh, look pretty much the same uh, for October. We are not seeing too many students leave, but we are seeing, um, I'm watching the home sales, and we're seeing some homes going up for sale in Newington, so if they're families, I'm assuming we'll be getting some more students. I just wanted to, I, I, the one big jump, the largest difference is at Patterson, and there were 11 students heavier than projected. Um, what kind of, were they scattered throughout? Was there a, a pocket of them somewhere? At the time we put the projections together, we did not realize, we did not account for the new preschool program that we opened at John Patterson. Okay. So we've put I in see. a new preschool okay. there and that is so our class part of the are reason in why. in worse shape than we expected them to be. Not in K to four. Not in K to four. Okay, no. very good. Um, Mrs. Guyon. Around the district, that's true. Class sizes are where we expected them we to thought. be. For the most part, they are. We have a few places that may have a little bit of a peak. Um, at Teacher Council, uh, it was brought to my attention that there might be, um, in some grades, about 26 in 7th and 8th grade. Um, and they noticed that mostly in science classes. Because of the lab environment, mm -hmm. they were more concerned. But again, we have to remember we do have the academy programs at both of the middle schools. And usually it's the language arts and social studies classes where the academy students are in those classes with the students who then they siphon off and go back to the academy or go to the academy for math and science. Okay. Que other questions on the superintendent of schools report? Mr. Vassell? Just a question with the transportation. I, as I was reading it, it talked about the student, um, the home stops or alternate locations. Are we still doing kindergarten door to door or not? We are continuing with kindergarten door to door. The change in the stops were mostly at the middle and the high school levels. They were not at the elementary levels. Thank you. And, and I think that paragraph specifically is more about um, dropping off somewhere other than home, like to a grandparent's house or someone yeah. else's parent is going to watch the student. I just I, I wasn't sure if we yeah. were still doing the kindergarten pickup. Kindergarten is still part of our policy. That's what I was Mr. Brandon? And I had heard just uh, going to open house, some kindergarten parents actually stopped me and asked me about that policy that 
they were not getting door to door. And so I wasn't sure, you know, I was going to wait until we talked about it. Who would they talk to? Do they go right to Mr. Barnes about that? They would contact Mr. Barnes. Okay. And again, sometimes it depends on the location of your house and right. the condition of your street. So it might not be right in your driveway, but right. it would be not that there's a common stop. It would be a stop for that kindergarten student close enough to the home. Lou? And one of the considerations really deals with cul-de-sacs. And there's numerous cul-de-sacs in town where there just isn't the entry capability of bringing a bus all the way around the cul-de-sac, so they have to meet them at the end of the cul-de-sac. So that's really the only limitations that we have. <coughs> I'm sorry, I had a couple of Patterson parents also question me on the <coughs> policy, so I was just... Uh... Mrs. Cross, did you have something to add? Yeah, I was just going to note that after spending every year with um, our former director at the Getting Ready for Kindergarten Night, he's always very careful to say that it's not a door-to-door -door policy. It's um, we pick up kindergartners as close to the home as we can, so that might be a better way to frame it. Um, Cul-de-sacs are one issue he brings up, but he also talks about sometimes if there are several kindergartner houses in a row, they don't stop and start the bus every house. They're, they're, they do what's realistic, but um, that they do look at you should be able to see your child from your house, like they don't go that far away. But he's very careful to say it's not a door-to-door, -door, that we're going to stop at every kindergartner's house. I just want to add two things not specific to kindergarten, but one is that I know that there were some there are some different stops this year because of the um, projected issues with construction and the worry about additional stops causing delays in the routes running. So that's one thing that parents um, should be aware of if, if their stop has changed from what it was last year and things like that. Um, the other is that in situ, I just want to remind for the boards. Um, you know, information moving forward. The start of the school year is a time when a lot of parents talk about a lot of very specific issues, especially with transportation. I just want to make sure that we're all familiar with our board policies, which are that they're first to go to the transportation director, that then gets elevated up to potentially a hearing in front of the board, um, at which the board sits as a, um, what's the word, as a, as a neutral as a neutral party not having any information before sitting in that hearing. So um, I've had one parent talk to me very specifically about the situation, said, can you help me, which I said, I can refer you to the right processes, but now I can't sit on that hearing because I already know and have prejudged how it could go out. So I just want to make sure that we're aware when parents are giving us issues for that type of thing or um, you know, a school punishment, suspension, expulsion type of matter, those things have a process so that the board remains neutral going into hearings and that as many of us on the hearings committee as possible can hear those things. Otherwise, we run into issues of needing to hire independent counsel to have to actually hear those types of, uh, of events. So just some, some fun procedural um, information for everyone as you, as you get uh, talked to by parents. Um, anything else for the superintendent, Dr. Braverman? Uh our open choice numbers was in the report. How many students do we have? Approximately? Um, we are, I don't have this specific number right here. I think we were projected at uh, coming in at 89 uh, students. So I can look that up to see the exact. But again, um, it's better to wait till the October 1st enrollment uh, because oftentimes some students have put in for multiple placements. So uh, they may have a seat right now with us. But if they do get into a magnet school between now and October 1, they will leave to go to a magnet school, mm -hmm. maybe or not. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, it's best to kind of wait till that October 1 to really give you the solid number on, on where we are and what we projected and then where we landed. And magnet numbers just ballpark? Are we more than last year, the same as last year? We're at 153, but again, I can't confirm that until the October I 1 know. enrollment comes yeah. in because students could have moved out of Newington and still being at a magnet school, but they won't be on our list. Right, we won't know that yet. No. Okay. Soon. Thank you. Any other questions on the superintendent schools report? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to public participation on any matter related to board responsibilities. And again, our phones are open at 860-665-8736. Oh, Mr. Tufel, you have something? Yes, uh, wondering about the Transitional Academy uh, trailer standings, how are we doing, or 
Yep, there are uh, new home. progress report as of noontime today. Uh, the trailer is on site and assembled. It's a three section building. Uh, they're still in the interior build out, which is the bathrooms, the kitchen, all of the finishing touches. And uh, when I talked to them today, they said they'd be ready with that part of the work by the end of the week. Then we have to shift into what the local officials will want for specifics for fire code building uh, official in town. Obviously, since we didn't have a full set of plans for this, we're really working off of a, uh, a basic proposal. Uh, we did not have signed off on plans by those officials uh, because of what the town was doing. So we may add another week or so to the work to fully outfit the space, uh, but that is, you know, we're well on our way. Within a few weeks, we should be ready to move in. So things are going well. Are all the utilities hooked up? Not yet. Not yet? No, we have to get a new telephone pole uh, for code purposes, which will carry both the power as well as the, the communications. Uh, and that is to be done sometime in the next couple of days. Thank you. OK. okay. Um, I'll just say the phone number one more time, 860-665-8736. We'll wait a moment. Seeing no one in the audience and no one on the phones, uh, we'll go to remarks by board members. Dr. Braverman. Uh, we were, I was late today because we had a student policy meeting, so we'll be looking at policies on harassment, equal opportunity, seven new policies, I believe, in two weeks. You'll all have them ahead of time. Very good. Uh, nothing unusual, but some new things that we need to step up and be compliant. Um, I had um, uh, United Technologies came to Central today. Um, their uh, financial leadership program, we had 12 Central students that got interviewed. Uh, I spoke to Frank Joseph about funding possibly a teacher for the Aerospace Academy. He didn't laugh, he didn't say no, <laughs> so uh, I think Mrs. Morak and I will put together another letter to him directly, which he'll forward on. and. We can, they can only say no. What have we got to lose? Well, so. Dr. Braverman, you, you got us a college credit program through Central. I have no doubt you will, you will be successful in this. Well, we'll keep trying. Uh, and the last thing is, is it time to start thinking about the budget and percents and what we're going to do next? Yes. Yes. Mr. Vassell? Mrs. Stamp? Uh, Mr. Tufelt? The, uh, I think moving forward with the social worker is a great step on our part. I welcome it very much. Uh, I'd like to uh, say we just signed some paperwork here and everything else. We're in looking forward to the Teacher of the Year Award. So, and remind, I think we still have the uh, meeting with all the with the teacher coming up as a reminder to the board tomorrow afternoon at 12 30 all board members are welcome to attend um, a meeting with the site committee uh, in the event center at newington high school which is where you were for the new teachers um, breakfast that's the culinary culinary yes all right thank you mr brenda mrs guyan has nothing tonight <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I let uh, Danielle Drost know that we were moving, had the ability to move forward with social workers, and she is thrilled. She wanted to make sure everybody knew that. She was very excited about that. Um, and I was able to, or last week I was at the open house at the high school, which is a very different experience. Um, I got a lot of exercise. There's a lot of walking to be done in that school. Um, trying to follow my son's schedule uh, but it was really it was it's always fun to be in the schools and to see the teachers in action and, and hear what's going on there so it was a great experience and um, they did a great job so it was that was fun thank you thank you 
Um, I just have a couple things. I just want to reiterate for anyone who decided to tune into the last two minutes of the meeting and not the rest of the meeting um, that um, if you hear a rumor that the board is just hiring to social workers because they have all this excess funds, um, please be advised that the, what's actually happening is that we're consolidating our administrative staff, um, getting rid of the deputy superintendent position effectively, um, and hiring uh, social workers uh, to start in the next couple of months um, so that it will be a zero dollar impact on our budget um, this year or next year. Um, it is due to the hard work of our administration, the sacrifices that they are making, um, and the commitment from the board, our administration, and our community as a whole to getting social workers in our middle schools one way or the other. Um, and, and we are all just thrilled that, that this is going to work out. Um, it, it, it is um, a great, great, great thing. Um, next, I want to say um, to the board, welcome back to business as usual, um, focused on education, um, highlighted by social workers in the middle schools. Um, and and I, I look forward to this um, getting back to really talking about education and, and the things that matter to our students um, above anything else. Um, and um, to get to this state, um, I have to say thank you to all the board members and all of our staff for the last um, many months of discussions and hours and meetings over things that um, you could fairly say did not relate to our student learning. So um, thank you all for your commitment to the board. I know it's been a challenging time for everyone, but um, we are moving forward and um, we have a healthy and strong district. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with, with how everything's going. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we will now move to Emily for a second statement. Well, now that you've no, now that you've thanked us, I feel like we should thank you for your leadership during all of this. You've done a tremendous job, and I know you've spent many, many, many hours away from home, away from Darla, which is important. Your wife also <laughs> um, at a lot of meetings. So thank you for all of the um, time and energy that you have put in that other people wouldn't necessarily see. My pleasure. Um, with that, I will call for a motion to adjourn. Move. By Mr. Vasella and seconded by Mrs. Guyon. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we are adjourned at 7.40 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.